Hi, this is Elliot Fishman, and welcome to part two of our Cirrhosis Adenoma talk. And let's get started. Before I was showing you some cases, typical and atypical, here's probably a more typical case. Complex cystic lesion, sort of mixed under two centimeters and over two centimeters cystic lesions in the head of the pancreas. Again, this case makes the point that often I find that the cirrhosis adenomas are easier to recognize on coronal views. You can see subtle punctate calcifications and a little bit of stretching of the GDA, that draping sign along the lesion. There is what appears to be a more solid component within the multiple cystic regions, and that's not uncommon as well, or it's just an area of increased vascularity which you can see very nicely here as well on the cinematic rendering. And this, I think, is a good classic appearance of a serous cyst adenoma. Another example, remember we talk about how you can get solid serous cyst adenomas that are very vascular and look like neuroendocrine tumors. This is a good example on the arterial phase of a lesion which has some increased vascularity Though compared to a typical neuroendocrine tumor, which is typically hypervascular throughout, there's a lot of cystic components. We do see some atrophy of the body and tail of the pancreas. And when you look at the coronal view, you very nicely see the branching of the SMA. You see some mass effect, but if you look hard on the volume rendering, the cystic components of the lesion are well-defined. And again, as I mentioned before, often the cystic components are easier to see when you get to the uh, when you get to the venous phase as opposed to the arterial phase. So that's an important thing to remember as well, and that can be very very helpful to you as another finding. And here it is on the venous phase coronal view, particularly image on your left, but also image on your right. It kind of looks like a cluster of small cysts, well defined. Very nice for a serous cyst adenoma extending toward the body of the pancreas. And again, that same appearance on some of the uh, cinematic rendering views, very nicely shown. Again, in terms of vessels, we can see mass effect on vessels. I showed you an example and commented about scalloping on portal vein and SMV. If things are large enough, they can displace the SMA or even celiac. We talk about draping, but we don't talk about vascular invasion. There is no vascular invasion present. Now, we talk about small cysts and large cysts. We also talk about an oligocystic pattern where the lesion is just purely one big cyst. It's uncommon, but it does occur. I think oligocystics are a bit more of a challenge because you think about things like a mucinocystic neoplasm, though typically they do have septations. We talk about side branch IPMNs, which are typically connected to the pancreatic duct, and the uh, cirrhosis adenomas, the oligocystic, are typically not connected to the pancreatic duct, so that can be helpful uh, with your differential diagnosis. And again, dilated pancreatic duct is is uncommon in cirrhosis adenomas, though, of course, I've shown you a number of examples to make the point that it does occur. So here's a nice case, lesion body of pancreas well-defined. This could be an IPMN, but I would like to see a dilated pancreatic duct, or at least a normal pancreatic duct, but communication, like IPMNs have. I don't see that. In the right age group, this could be a mucinocystic neoplasm. It could also be a pseudocyst with the right clinical history. Again, lesion very well defined, very sharp margins, no enhancement, no septations, and no duct dilatation. Here's another patient with vague abdominal pain. There's a cystic lesion, junction, body and tail of pancreas, well defined. I would even consider a lymphoepithelial cyst here. I could consider a side branch IPMN, but again, I don't really see communication with the pancreatic duct. Well defined, it's relatively small. This was a serous cyst adenoma. Now I think because of location and history, this had fluid sampling and that's how we got the diagnosis of serous cyst adenoma. Here's another case, very similar to the last one, okay? Here's one where there's faint calcification along the edge of the lesion. You're not going to see IPMNs with calcification. You're not going to see MCNs 
with calcification? Let me take that back. We do see MCNs with calcification. They can be in the periphery, they can be central, they can be dense, they can be thin. So MCN would still be in the differential diagnosis. Again, making the point there is overlap, there's no dilated duct present, there's a little bit of lobulation, but you can see cirrus is up there in my differential, but I could not totally exclude an MCN. IPMN I don't like because I don't see communication with the pancreatic duct. Cirrus cystadenomas do not calcify, but again, that's a possibility in the differential diagnosis. Now, what about this case? Well, here you can see a dilated pancreatic duct and atrophy of the body and tail of pancreas, but there's a large lesion in the head of the pancreas. This lesion has not so much small cysts, right? There's no small cysts. Maybe these are large cysts, but what you're typically seeing here is the appearance of something that goes between the macrocystic and the oligocystic. Obviously not an oligocystic because those have no septations. These are large septations. Yes, this is the pancreatic head and not body and tail, but we said cirrhosis adenomas do occur in the head of the pancreas. And just a beautiful example of multiple septations, multiple large cystic lesions in a cirrhosis adenoma. Again, the distribution uh, of septations is not the same throughout the gland, and that's something that you need to get used to. It's not a perfect cookie-cutter appearance. Multiple different cystic lesions. Again, could you say this is an MCN? I would think about an MCN. Not a great location, but again, MCNs do have these linear septations, these stroma that are ovarian in nature. So MCN is a good thought. Here is the lesion very nicely shown with cinematic rendering, the multiple septations, the cystic components, and this was resected in part because of mass effect. It's a very large lesion, and this also was a serous cystadenoma, very nicely shown as well on the sagittal views. Another case, this patient had Ehlers-Danlos disease. There's no increased incidence of cystic pancreatic lesions. Remember, Ehlers-Danlos disease gives you aneurysms and pseudoaneurysms of multiple vessels. But here's a cystic lesion in the pancreatic head, thin septations, nicely has mass effect, displacing portions of the normal gland, but no increased enhancement of the gland. Very nicely shown to you as well on the cinematic coronal views and sagittal views. And this is a good example of a cystic lesion, maybe a thin septation, but this is very good for oligocystic serous cystadenoma. Now, challenging cases, weight loss. So now I'm thinking about malignancy, weight loss, abdominal pain. There's a large cystic lesion tail of pancreas, but the edges are not very sharp, right? This ended up being resected because as I go through it, you'll see why, but there's no way you look at this and say benign lesion next case. I'm worrying about a cystic lesion, an MCN maybe with malignant degeneration. Could this be a large IPMN with early carcinoma? I'm not thinking about a serous cystadenoma. Yes, the lesion is somewhat cystic, but the thing that bothers me the most is the borders of the lesion. Subtle enhancement, Subtle thickening, maybe some nodularity. Yes, as you look at the venous phase, particularly on the left, I do see some of the septations, but it's very hard for me to just look at this and say serous cystadenoma. If I was being quizzed, I would throw it in there. But again, look at the borders. To me, I would, maybe my first thought would be an MCN with a moderate to high-grade malignancy. So, Again, I like to show this example as some of the difficulty in making the right diagnosis. You're surely going to, at a minimum, do fluid sampling with EUS. You will eventually simply remove the lesion with a distal pancreatectomy. And everyone was very happy, particularly the patient, that they only had a serous cystadenoma. What about this case? Here we can see on the... Um, axial images, arterial phase, what looks like a cystic lesion, but here I begin to see what almost looks like cysts. You can see it on the coronal view, 
you can see the vessel, the GDA, is draped over the lesion. The hepatic artery is draped and stretched, but there's no neovascularity. On the image on the right, the septations are better seen, and now I'm really getting a feel of those septations. In this case, there's no evidence of pancreatic duct dilatation. The body and the tail of the pancreas look great. There is the most subtle finding of scalloping along the patient's portal vein. And so here, although at first glance, perhaps, I wasn't thinking about a serous cystadenoma, the more you look at these images, the more images you have, the more you look at the venous, looking at the volume rendering and coronal, the more convinced you are, or pretty convinced you're dealing with a serous cystadenoma, which this indeed was. Now here's another one that looks very similar with more vascularity. Now again, you're looking early at the lesion. Could this be a cystic neuroendocrine tumor? That's not a bad thought. The more you look at this lesion, you see the stretching of the vasculature around the lesion. With neuroendocrine tumors, you see neovascularity and the vessels are irregular. You don't see vessels simply stretched. Stretching of vessels is mass effect but doesn't show an aggressive nature. Beautiful example on the MIP imaging show you the stretching of the vessels and then as you go to the venous phase you begin to see the stretching. You don't see the vessels obviously they kind of become isodents at this point but the septations here you can see very well-defined lesion with septations. Again, I could think about an MCN, but it doesn't look like that. I could think about my initial thoughts of a neuroendocrine tumor. It's very well-defined, and there is some rim enhancement. This does make the point that with serous cystadenomas, which obviously this ends up being, you can see some rim enhancement, which again is that stretching of the vessels around the edge, rather than neovascularity. It is a challenge, but you can see it. Another similar example, patient with weight loss, multiple septations, and what looks like perhaps a solid component. Now, if this was an MCN, you would say solid component is malignancy, but we said 99.9% .9 of serous cystadenomas never have malignancy, and I've never seen one with a solid component. But what you can see within a serous cystadenoma, I've shown you several that are vascular, I've shown you several that are cystic. You can have both components present. So in this case, we kind of have a mixed looking lesion. The um, areas of enhancement decrease as you go to venous phase imaging. Again, the scalloping of the uh, portal vein and SMV is nicely seen. Again, typical malignancies in case, invade, compress, narrow, but scalloping is something I only remember with serous cystadenomas. Now, the last variety, the one that's probably the most difficult to diagnose, but probably what's good is we highly see them, is the solid variant. The solid variant really looks like a neuroendocrine tumor or another solid mass, but typically a neuroendocrine tumor. Here's a mass in the region of the body of the pancreas, and to me, there's a neuroendocrine tumor. There's no dilated pancreatic duct present. And I'll show you a few more images, but this ends up being, to everyone's happiness, a serous cystadenoma. Again, a vascular lesion in the body of the pancreas. Metastasis from renal cell carcinoma, if the patient had a renal cell carcinoma. You can think about other Mets melanoma that are also can be vascular, though it's typically renal cell. We could talk about some type of neuroendocrine tumor. That's what I'm focusing on. But I want to tell you that serous cystadenomas have a range of appearances, and this vascular lesion ended up being a uh, serous cystadenoma solid type, very vascular. A very atypical, very unusual appearance, but this is one of my best examples. Fortunately, we don't see this very often because I promise you, I would have called this a neuroendocrine tumor, and I would not have said neuroendocrine tumor cannot rule out solid serous cystadenoma. You can see the lesion washes out nicely in the venous phase, but of course, neuroendocrine tumors wash out, 
So that really is not going to help you all that much. There's no invasion, but a lot of neuroendocrine tumors simply push and do not invade, particularly when they're only in the 3 to 4 centimeter range. Now here's another variant. Uh, same thing, this solid variant, which can be very difficult. You look at the body and tail of the pancreas, there's a mass at the junction. It's not as vascular as the prior case, but there's some vascularity. There's no dilated duct, but there's mass effect. There is some cystic components, but it looks like a solid lesion to me, looking across the arterial phase imaging. Here it is on the venous phase, almost becomes isodense, which kind of makes you worry. Serous cyst adenomas typically are better seen on venous. The cystic components, the septations are all better seen. Here it looks like a solid mass. I would worry perhaps we have a neuroendocrine tumor that wasn't super vascular and now has become isodense and almost hard to see when you look at the coronal view. We look at some of the volume rendering, which shows the imaging and the mass a little bit better. But again, it's a tough call even on the cinematic. And this was a solid type serous cyst adenoma, not as vascular as the prior study, but vascular enough and that it becomes isodense as you get to venous phase. Here it is on the arterial phase with cinematic you can see what looks like a maybe a neuroendocrine tumor with peripheral enhancement. But again, the isodense kind of bothers me. Neuroendocrine tumors can become isodense. So I would worry about a malignancy here. Could I be thinking about an atypical adenocarcinoma of the pancreas? Usually adenocarcinomas become better seen on venous than arterial, but I still would consider that. And surely my first thought is not going to be in the serous cyst adenoma category. And just a really nice example. Now the next thing I want to speak about is pancreatic calcifications and looking at some of the patterns with serous cyst adenoma. But it looks like I've used the chunk of my time and why don't we get started with the calcifications in the part three of the series. See you in a few moments. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe to the CTSS YouTube channel. You can also visit us at ctss.com for even more videos, plus quizzes, pearls, protocols, and oh so much more. We're also in the App Store and have well over a dozen apps for iPhone and iPad, all completely free. Thanks for watching.